the Education Committee uh, of Quorum, and I call the meeting to order. Can I remind Assembly Broadcasting that we are now in public session and ask Assembly Broadcasting to keep all members in spotlight for the rest of the meeting? Can I seek the committee's agreement to adopt a revised agenda where all oral evidence sessions have been postponed due to the exceptional uh, executive office statement that was required in the assembly this morning? Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Uh, are members aware of any apologies? I think we have William Humphrey, Clark. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, members, agenda item two, chairperson's business. Um, in terms of school closures, can I remind members that it is understood and now confirmed that schools will close for two weeks for an extended Halloween break. Um, can I remind members that the committee had sought clarity on this last week in order to allow schools time to prepare and perhaps record the committee's regret or disappointment that its suggestions in this regard were not possible to follow uh, and concern in respect of the provision of support for vulnerable children. Perhaps I could be slightly more specific in that as well, members. Um, the pertinent questions have been raised with me with regard to will free school meals be provided next week when it is not a scheduled holiday. Uh, I think, Clark, we're right to add to that what will special educational needs health services provision be maintained next week and we I was able to ask at the assembly in relation to child care and the first minister uh, advised that ch child care is to remain open and um, perhaps we could seek full clarity with regards to child care that is provided on school settings as well Members, any other comments or questions in relation to that announcement with regard to the closure of schools? Yeah, just, just Chair, Daniel, um, uh, obviously we're in a very difficult situation and it's very fluid and changing of the day uh, and we are seeing and have seen over the course of the last number of weeks considerable challenges faced by our schools and our teachers and principals and children, young people and parents. The level of infection has been clear in quite a number of schools affected schools but I'm just wondering uh, if when we get beyond this two-week period of closure, uh, that further consideration is given for further closure. We need to see clarification if the Minister is making any preparations in terms of ensuring that the school is still available for key workers, children, uh, because that will be a concern. It's already been raised with me five minutes after the statement was made, um, because it will be a big concern. I know you mentioned childcare, but that will be a, a, a worry. Also, in term, there needs to be some form of analysis carried out of how schools have been affected and how the spread where the spread was occurring, how it was spreading, you know, so, some form of analysis so we can understand uh, how it has been managed in schools. And I don't know how you do that, given there's so many, but there, there certainly needs to be something uh, done um, throughout uh, Northern Ireland. Thanks, Daniel. Yeah, it, it's been understood, if I caught it correctly, that the First Minister said that there had been 400, the Public Health Agency had said there had been 485 incidents um, with less than 10 schools with two or more incidents. That was the type of data we've been asking the Education Minister for for some considerable weeks now. So we have got some data there. Clark, if we could um, follow that up in our correspondence with the Department of Education as well, again, and maybe <coughs> reference the fact that the First Minister was able to refer to 485 incidents, less than 10 schools with two or more incidents. So, so basically on that point here, my question will be more focused on, is the system that we have in place that has now been tried and tested sufficient to ensure we prevent the spread of infection? And does it also uh, ensure, is, is it protecting, uh, I suppose, teachers or those more vulnerable? Because if children are going into bubbles, then they're going back into their homes, grandparents and so on and so forth. This thing is spreading beyond belief. Yep. So uh, is, is the model working? I think we need to get analysis around. Happy, uh, members happy to do, contend to do that. Yeah, one one other quick yeah. thing that yeah, I can't bring in when we second just to there, another quick thing I remember as well that I, I know the clerk will tell me we've asked about on multiple <coughs> occasions, but it seems pertinent in in light of those comments, Daniel, that we ask for again is update with regards to proposed um, mobile testing units that do not seem to have transpired. Chair, they to have answered that one, that uh, when the CMO wrote to the committee that they hadn't been used, hadn't been asked for by schools, is what we've been told. Right. That was about two weeks ago. 
Um, okay, so it's a second update then on the use of mobile testing units. Have not used them as well then. Uh, I, I understand that schools are being supported by the public health agency, and they had not required that support. That's what we were told. Okay. Previously. Okay. I think Justin. Okay. And what may perhaps then what assistance schools are getting with contact tracing? It's my understanding that schools are the contact tracing system at this moment in time, which seems a, a heavy load. Um, I'll bring Karen in and then Justin. Just on that point, Chair, schools are the contact uh, tracing system, and I've been contacted this morning to see over this two week period. Will that continue? So we'd need clarity on that. Um, and definitely clarity on the figures because less than 10 schools had two or more incidents um, and had required support was what was said this morning. There's nine post-primary schools here in Derry and Robbie and myself met them last week and all nine have had more than two incidents and all nine have had made contact with the PHA. We're struggling to get the figures. We haven't got the figures in relation to positive cases um, and how many are isolating. In my own city, Thornhill College has closed this week because of the high numbers of uh, absences. And if this announcement hadn't been made today, many more would have followed. Um, and obviously in relation to the high number of cases in Derry and Straban, we are seeing that um, ourselves as local reps. But we're, we, obviously we're not seeing it coming out from the department in terms of evidence, so we need that evidence. Yeah, I'm aware of at least one other school with <coughs> two or more incidents, not in those nine schools as well, Karen, so that does suggest that that data is out of, out of date, potentially. Um, okay, uh, Justin, Just Following on from what Daniel and Karen have said, in terms of SEND, I'm really, really concerned about parents, some parents who today will have their head in their hands wondering how the hell they're going to cope with that week. Some parents have had to drug their children to keep them safe. What is the guidance? What is the advice? What are the supports that are going to be there for those parents? What are the supports that are going to be there to help those kids who need additional help in the home or in school? Where are they going to get support? Where are they going to get answers from? Where are the, where are the exact, providing those answers, providing guidance, providing some sort of comfort to those parents and to those children? In terms of childcare, front line line workers now are contacting me saying, how are they going to have their kids looked after in that additional holiday week from school? They need guidance, they need answers. That has happened. That's, we've that, seek that from the executive. At risk children, I've mentioned it I don't know how many times at this committee. What is the protections? What are the protections there for at risk children? Are they safe in their own homes during this pandemic and during another lockdown? We aren't seeing any data. The data hasn't come forward in terms of what's, what happens next, what, what, what happens after these two weeks if there hasn't been any marked decrease in the, in the numbers. What's the, what's the contingency planning? Are the headmasters or the teachers getting getting the guidance and getting the steer and that's really really concerned about this but hopefully those answers will be forthcoming you know very very promptly so that teachers parents principals have answers thank you um, justin and um, maybe the committee wants to consider whether we call on the education minister to return to the committee next week uh robbie but yeah, thank you um yes just want to echo what the deputy chair said we met with a number of uh school leaders from foil and um i would say if you if you Listen to what they'd told us today, that would probably amount to what the Minister shared, First Minister shared with us today. But, and what, I, what I'm concerned about is maybe how they're recording it, because um, I'm, I was at a chat with a, a student last week who goes to a school in and around uh, the, the South Down area, and, and one, almost one full year was isolated at one stage. Um, Some in the region over, over 100 pupils. Is that one instant? And if it, you know, it's, it, it doesn't sound so. What is an incident? What constitutes an what incident? incident? How, how, how do they measure that? Because um, that, that, that's quite that's quite significant. And just on on the question that I raised with the first minister today, I think this is important. And this isn't a statement to say that I support blended learning or online learning as the methodology, because I think it is. Uh, there are issues and restrictions with it. But what I think we we need to do is ensure that. A full scoping exercise is happening at the moment, that it is uh, a contingency that is already being identified, and if that is the case, that it is resourced uh, properly and effectively, because whilst it wouldn't be anyone's first choice, I don't think, because there's nothing to replace ca classroom learning, in the event where it does become a, a, a needed uh, resource, it needs to be across the board, especially um, to pick up on the, 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 the vulnerable kids in, uh, who, in social survived areas who are already uh, uh, on the fringe of education, and as, as Justin rightly said, those children with uh, special education needs and looked after children. It needs to be comprehensive. Yeah. And that Nick, next, the, the ministers have been explicit that next week will be an additional five days out of learning without 
remote home mm -hmm. uh, blended learning, which is obviously a concern. Any any other members wish to come in? I, do, I just Daniel, have a form yeah. of words just <coughs> around what we should ask. That will the minister seek to initiate research in partnership with the EA and the PHA to ascertain the extent of the spread within schools and within different age groups, so that we can use science to guide the decision making? I think, Chairperson, we've done this. Yeah. Uh, we've definitely written to the department. I think it might have been those exact words. Okay. Okay. So no answer has been received as yet. I, th I think if we can impress the urgency of some of those requests, um, particularly in relation to childcare and yeah. special educational yeah. needs and, and vulnerable provision um, at, at this time. Um, it seemed like a pertinent t or board work programme still to come up, uh, Clark? Yeah. 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 Okay, maybe take a look Here. at that then. Yeah, Here. Catherine, yeah. Um, can, I, can I just say from June, we have been looking for um, the department's um, scenario planning for um, remote learning, um, and we still haven't seen that. And my fear would be that with what the First Minister said during the, the meeting or, or the statement earlier that schools will reopen on the 2nd of November, that the department view that as a definite and, and sit back and not look um, at contingency plans. So just on the, the blended learning um, and how that, what, what scenario plans they have in place um, and to ensure that if on the 2nd of November our schools aren't able to reopen, that there's something to be able to put in place there um, to ensure that children with special educational needs, um, you know, that, that they're supported um, in all of this because what we can't do is go back to the way things were um, in the previous lockdown, um, where we have parents and carers um, crying out for the help and support um, from the schools and from the, the department. Okay. Members, any other comments in relation to uh, school closures, Robin? Yeah, yeah sure. Maybe we could ask the minister if he has, in fact, written to the finance minister and seeking a package of support in the event that different scenarios arise over, over the next uh, two to three weeks uh, and indeed what level of support the education minister might support might expect in, in those circumstances okay members agreed with that yep yep okay okay members move on then to agenda item 2.2 the informal meeting with the equality commission and the equality coalition can i remind members that the education committee met in informal session with the equality commission and equality coalition on tuesday the 12th of october and seek the committee's agreement to invite the Children's Law Centre to brief on issues relating to vulnerable children's education during lockdown and restart. That be agreed? Agreed. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Okay. Agenda item 2.3 is budget gathering information. Can I refer members to page 544 of meeting packs, which includes information on the Department of Finance budget gathering information process for 2021 to 2024. The information makes reference to fresh start and a revised schedule of capital spend and a large number of new resource commitments, including addressing food poverty, period poverty, changes to free school meal thresholds, and a review of uniform grants. Can I seek the committee's agreement to rearrange uh, our agenda and take a briefing from the department on this and October monitoring on the 4th of November 2020? That be agreed. Chair, can I just ask, what's the relationship between, um, in those two areas, the relationship between education and communities? In, sorry, Am I wrong? Is, is there no relationship between education and community? In respect of what, sorry? I... Uh, uh, my memory serves me right. Is there not a relationship between education and communities in the free school meal areas? And there's some mechanism for delivery of? Oh. I think it was the, the, the out of term package that happened during the summer. Um, was I think you're right, Robin was in some way administered via the Department yes. of Communities. Um, and don't think it would have a, a normal role during term time provision, um, but we can certainly seek verification as to the current we're, status we're of that. We're not yeah. moving into a normal term time situation yeah. if we're extending the mm. 
the Halloween break ban additional. Yeah. Okay. So, the, days, so. so that's in the earlier one. How they will work with the Department so for Communities could, yeah. to deliver a free school meals, which we did ask. So that's fair enough. Yeah. The, the bit in the the budget gathering information was apparently DOF commissioned the departments to do a budget gathering um, information for 21 to 2024. And just when looking at the department's version of it, it, it includes a number of things. One of them was changes to free school meal thresholds. Yes. And they set aside a figure of 18 million a year for this. And I think this was around changes to universal credit. It's just, I didn't expect it to be that much. Yeah. I thought you know, universal credit's changing, so your eligibility for free school meals, that yeah. would change. Didn't expect it to cost the eighteen million. So yeah. there's just there's a few really interesting numbers in there, which maybe they're a bit speculative, but it might be interesting to talk to the committee about that um, yeah. when we have a one of the vanishing holes in our um, in our um, forward work program. So uh, yes, chairperson. Yeah, just say that, that sounds like an enormous figure. Mm -hmm. Eighteen million. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, members content to receive a briefing on that budget gathering information and the October monitoring round then? Yeah, agreed. Agreed? Yep. Okay, thanks. Uh, 2.4, supply resolution and budget number three bill. Can I seek the committee's agreement to speak on behalf of the committee during the supply resolution debate on the 19th of October 2020, highlighting the need for additional resources to support school restart um, and any other issues that members would wish to raise. Um, any issues that members wish to raise before we agree for me to speak on our behalf? No? Okay. Members content for me to speak on behalf of the committee? Yep. Agreed. Agreed. It's content as you can be. Thanks. <laughs> um, okay. Agenda item three, draft minutes. Can I refer members to draft minutes of the committee meeting of 7th of October 2020 at page 168 of your packs and seek members' agreement that the minutes are a complete and accurate record of proceedings? Agreed? Agreed. Thank you. There are no matters arising. Any other members have matters arising? No? Okay. Clark, then, agenda item five is correspondence. Can I refer members to page 484, where we have 16 items of correspondence? A summary note for which is included at page 485 to 488 and ask the clerk to speak to these items. So members, as uh, Chair has indicated, the summary note at page 485, I'll just, I'll, I'll drive you through all of them. There are a few, you might want to comment on them, so I'll stop after each one. So um, the second item at page 489 is a response from the department confirming that substitute teachers who are required to self-isolate will continue to be paid during their period of their engagement with the schools. So this is a question members have asked in various different forms and we, we have an answer. So I propose to move on and just note that um, at page 492 is a response from the Minister on the independent review of education. The Minister states that the Department is considering appointments and the terms of reference for that review. Um, the Committee had written previously about the, the other review, which is about the socioeconomic deprivation, and members had just raised concerns about how the terms of reference of those had been developed and whether uh, for that and for appointment arrangements co-design had been used. So. I'm wondering, Chairperson, does the committee want to write in similar terms about this review? Yeah, I think, Karen, I think you had raised previously an interest in engagement with the department in relation to the terms of reference um, and appointment process for the independent review. Do you want to come in on that? Yeah, it was just in, the, I suppose, the New Decade, New Approach, and we talk about co-design, and we all signed up to it. Um, and as I say, the the last panel was established, as was the terms of uh, reference, but there didn't seem to be any co-design, so it was just around the next time um, will there be a different approach? Will you know the committee get an opportunity beforehand to put forward some uh, you know recommendations? So it was just really if things would happen differently the next time. Members be content to write to the Department of Education. Um, to request that the committee is consulted in relation to the terms of reference for the independent review? Great. Yeah, agreed. Mm -hmm. Content with that, Karen, yeah. Yeah, and I suppose to ask what other co-design, obviously, Clark, um, 
is likely with regards to the terms of reference and the appointment arrangement. Members content? Yep. yep. Okay, thank okay. you. So page 496 is a response from the National Education Union providing its views on flexibility around school starting age. Um, the committee has asked RAISE to uh, update its paper on the subject. So what I would suggest is that uh, we'll get RAISE to come and brief in person about this in uh, whenever they have that done and then put all that together if members are content to do that. Agreed? Yeah. Agreed. Thanks, Clark. Then page 520, correspondence from St Mary's Pomeroy about the funding allocation for the extension of nurture programmes in schools. This was, uh, I think, uh, Catherine raised this last week. Um, so the committee has actually already written to the department seeking clarity on the criteria um, for nurture support, why some got and some did not. So uh, waiting for answers for that. We're therefore content to note this as we're already actioning it. Agreed. Okay, very good. Yep. Page 522, um, the minister is sending out here his plans for the 2021 exam series, including students participating in exams, adaptations to qualifications, and planning for contingency arrangements. And I know members have commented on this um, already uh, through the urgent oral that was earlier in the week. Um, I just wonder if there's any other further information they'd like to ask the department uh, in this regard. I'm sensing no, so... Well, uh, the Chair... Um, yeah, go ahead, Robbie. Yeah, I think... I mean, it's... it's, it's I don't think it's, it's something that's going to be fixed. Um, I think um, it's, there's going to be a, nest, a need for agility to it, but it's, all, it's not a finished piece of work, as, to my understanding, but there's still some ongoing work. I might raise the question with the Minister with regard to um, uh, how much of the post-consultation recommendations by CCEA that made it to the final cut by the Department uh, I fear that it's probably 50% or less, and it was a, it was a heavily responded to consultation um, with a lot of um, key stakeholders responding to it. Um, uh, the Minister then mentioned uh, in his response to me about optionality. I think that the members will re remember that CCA in, in our discussion certainly talked about optionality not being a recommendation from them, that it was omission, and I think we, we shared that view. Um, so I think that's a, 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 something that certainly on a personal level, whether the committee shares my desire to see uh, how much of the, the recommendations by CCA actually made it to the final cut uh, and, and, and the departmental's position uh, on this. Certainly it's created a lot of anxiety and fear out there, not just with students but with teachers as well, in their ability to deliver this curriculum across a number of subjects. Yeah, I, I would concur with those, those comments, Robbie, and reiterate the need for us perhaps to consider in forward work plan yeah. an invitation for the Minister to, to attend the, the committee in, in as soon as possible. Dano, did you want to come in no, there as well? Just, yeah, just agreeing. Okay. Um, so, noted then, and, um, and they're recording the committee's concerns as, as set out by the member. I think, yeah, perhaps we could even ask the question that Robbie poses in terms of um, could the minister outline which, say, recommendations that were adopted, um, which were not, and why? And a particular concern raised by the committee in our response, which is obviously available to all members, um, was concern for the lack of mitigation in GCSE maths and English. Yeah. It might be worth asking specifically as to why the minister decided against mitigations for GCSE English and maths. So the question is about the, the what, to what extent did the suggestions from stakeholders make the final cut rather so than suggestions of, from yeah, CCA? Yeah, CCA, yeah. Yeah, CCA will have made a, a recommendation. We, we talked around this previously, if you remember, with regard to the piece of work that went before, um, with regard to uh, the, the flawed sort of A-level GCSE marking system and what made it the final cut. So what I'd like to find out really, to be fair, is what the, the content was at CCA submission was given and how much of that made the final cut and what was what was then omitted to use the... Yeah, the, yep. the but you, I think the clerk makes a useful clarification here, Robbie, as well, though. You, you're probably, I presume, also interested in how much of the stakeholder response to oh, SIA yeah. made its way into the final recommendations as well. Uh, absolutely. That's clerk, yeah. Okay, so content to write to the department about those things? Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely, okay. marvellous, Thank Grant. Okay. Thanks, Clark. So at page 526 is other correspondence from SIA. Um, the committee had asked about other examination contingencies and including the possible cancellation of exams and whether they were thinking about that. And the answer is they are considering those uh, contingencies but were unable to provide a timeline. 
Just, just a random yeah. chair. Um, I posed the question to the Education Minister um, in relation to uh, the independent review and to see it. Surely any decisions that be taken will need to be reviewed. Whatever the finding for of that review, no. So in other words, it's going on now with decisions and then there's certain findings in that report, which I have no doubt there will be. Uh, he'll have to revisit a lot of these things. We don't have a time scale for the outcome of the independent review yet. Six we? weeks, he said, from oh, right, when okay. it initiates. Okay. He says it'll be short, but we need to see what the terms of reference are, obviously, to see how far-reaching this will be. There's a few things built in there that I think we'd like him to report to the committee on in, in person, by the sounds of things. But, um, but obviously, yeah. Chair, the, the, the independent review, and I, and I welcome that the Minister has agreed to an independent review of SEA, because it's absolutely necessary, given what we've seen this year. Um, I don't, I don't believe the, the, the findings will be good reading, um, particularly when we've seen what the impact has been of decisions. And yes, we understand as a committee we're in unprecedented times and decisions had to be made, but the advice that was continually ignored and the warnings ignored by CA and others is not, but, not good. So. I suppose importantly as well how that, that those findings would inform better in exam 2021 as well then, um, particularly if yeah. any level of centre assessed grading is required due to absences or mm -hmm. um, closures. Okay, Clark, did you get enough from that? <laughs> I think you're I'm recording the committee's concerns in that regard, but yeah. that's the I'm just conscious that the minister is probably going to play ahead with a certain position, but he may find that he has to entirely change that okay. position, given the findings of whatever independent okay. review, review. Uh, whatever the independent review panel finds. Is that not just the nature of the beast, Chair? It is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, suppose, I mean, see, if we see, knew the, see, I guess if we knew the time scale for yeah. um, the, the, the minister's conclusion on what contingencies he 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 has yeah. in place for exams 2021, I you know presume it would be wise to have a, a centre assessed grading model available as a contingency. We accept, as the minister says, that examinations or assessment um, is, is obviously the priority but it would be unwise to not have a contingency in place if we knew the timeline time line for deciding on contingencies you know whether that is going to happen before the six weeks or not given previous timescales I'd be pretty surprised if it was but mm -hmm. we can ask those things Clark yeah Sorry, what, what are we asking? Time scale for um, <laughs> time scale for a decision on contingency for exams 2021. I think we've asked that one, and okay. CIA said no, they couldn't tell us. Um, so okay. they are considering contingencies, but they can't give us a time okay. scale now. Put that in the couldn't tell us list, and we'll come back to that <laughs> in a while. Then. We um, have asked, but he has asked the question. That is that is important and uh, okay. might be relevant down the road. But anyway, okay. uh, so chair, at uh, page 530 is a response from SIA providing clarification as to why, in evidence to the committee on 3rd of June, it was indicated by SIA that the grade awarding models for GCSE, AS and A-level had not been determined at that time and thus could not be discussed with the committee. Um, SIA indicates that although the Minister had directed SIA to adopt certain grade awarding options, the models were still under development in June, thus SIA declined in June to answer the relevant questions. So, um, Chair, members, uh, you may wish to seek members' views on that answer. Yeah, so can I, can I seek members' views on SIA's explanation and whether I should write to the Minister indicating committee dissatisfaction that we were not provided um, with the options that had been selected at that time, it seems to be on the grounds that we used the word model rather than option. Members content to ask that, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay, right. Thanks, Chairperson. Okay, uh, moving on then, uh, page 534 is uh, just correspondence from a concerned parent about the examination and curriculum processes for 2021, which the committee has just discussed. At 536 is the um, October monitoring round and budget information, which we discussed a, a few minutes ago. So um, the committee has agreed in action there. At 511, so this is page 555, it's uh, something from the Committee for Finance. They've written to the Department of Finance seeking details of all bids submitted by the department within the in-year monitoring process. I think we have that information, I think, largely for DE. And then at 558, 
This is a response from the Education Authority. Now, this followed an informal meeting that the committee had with the National Deaf Children's Society. Um, they had raised issues about um, statementing for uh, children with hearing loss, and also they had concerns about the teaching for the deaf workforce, lots of retirements coming up, um, and so they were worried about there being enough teachers. Um, EA seems to indicate it shares those concerns. It also suggests that additional funding is needed to train mainstream um, teachers. Uh, can I ask, Chairperson, um, if the committee has a view on this and perhaps we could write to the Department in this regard? Yeah, mem members can tend to write to the Department of Education um, in relation to concerns regarding the uh, planning for teaching for the work deaf or teaching for the deaf workforce um, and the fact that additional funding is needed to train main mainstream teachers. Agreed. Yeah, could, uh, uh, yeah uh, absolutely, Chair. But could, could we just maybe have a piece of research uh, as to around the numbers and uh, expected numbers going into primary and transferring through into secondary? Uh, could we also? Uh, I know only have one person who has uh, gone into university and, and, and had difficulties in going into the university, Queen's in fact, and I have to say Queen's were extremely supportive of the time, but could we perhaps, uh, Peter, find out how many children with hearing difficulties are actually transferring right up to third level education? Okay, okay. we'll have a go. Yep. Mm -hmm. If that information is available, if that's agreed, Chairperson. Agreed. Good question. Yep. Agreed. Okay. Thanks. And then we have at page 562, this is from Dyslexia Awareness in Northern Ireland outlining their concerns about access to the curriculum for dyslexic children and calling for changes to how um, those children would be supported. So, um, Chairperson, I suggest to the committee that they forward to the department for comment, unless members have others comments to make on it. Agreed. Yeah, and uh, a parent has contacted me, uh, concerned about their child who has had dyslexic support um, in place in previous academic years, but this year it has been reduced substantially because of the pandemic and we're very concerned about the impact on those children's education. So just to add that note. Okay. Yeah, so how, how that be addressed? Yeah, so current current support available for children with dyslexia. Yeah. yeah. Members agreed? Yep, yeah, important piece. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then at page 565, it's related correspondence from the Professional Association of Teachers of Students with Specific Learning Difficulties. This is Pat also. It's the same subject, and I think the action that has been suggested will cover if members are content. Okay. And then moving on to 569, this is correspondence from a concerned parent in relation to the seclusion of pupils. Um, their suggestion is that the restart guidance requires schools to record instances of children who are symptomatic and who are being isolated. So, that, as you'll recall, members, the guidance says um, that if children start to show symptoms, if they can't be sent home immediately, they can be isolated. But I think the guidance indicates um, that uh, somebody should be with them or else there should be a line of sight um, wherever the person is isolated. Um, I'm not sure that the guidance actually says that um, occurrences of seclusion have to be recorded. But I think the guidance indicates that where the child is sent home, that has to be recorded. So perhaps the committee would be content to write to the department just seeking confirmation about what's supposed to be recorded and the numbers of times that symptomatic children have been secluded at school, which I think plays into your earlier question about the data and how the, the disease is progressing. Yeah. Agreed? Agreed. Lovely, marvellous. And then the last one is just from the uh, Chief Executive of the Assembly confirming that there are um, alternative meeting rooms available, that uh, Room 115 members' dining room could be actually available for a closed session if we needed it. But I think going to the uh, developing public health situation, I'm not sure if we will see Karen basically in the uh, in the chamber, or sorry, we'll see her in the chamber, but we'll be not in the committee rooms for a while. So uh, the, the position, the situation may not arise. If members are content to note. Okay. Thanks, Clark. Agenda item six for work program. Can I refer members to meeting packs, which include at page 580 a revised draft forward work program? Can I ask the clerk to speak to the forward work program? Thanks, Chairperson. Um, just a couple of things, members. A thing I probably should have told you before room 29, as you can now see, those of you on the TV, has now been set out a bit differently. Um, so we're now definitely, um, without a doubt, um, spaced. 
Um, but what this means is the additional spacing and all the measuring is that certain rooms are now unavailable. So uh, for committee meetings, so standards and privileges can't meet in their usual room. They'll have to meet in here. So between us and economy and infrastructure, we're going to take it in turns in ending our meetings early so that standards and privileges can have their meeting. I have very little visibility on this, but um, we'll, we'll try and minimise the disruption as far as possible. But that, that's just the way it is. We can just about accommodate all of you with no witnesses safely. Um, but if there are witnesses, then um, we would require members to use Starleaf. And we do have this uh, problem with useful or usable uh, committee meeting rooms owing to the important requirement to maintain social distancing. Um, so just to be aware of that. Um, members, we had an informal brief um, at 9.30 yesterday. Um, and we've got another one scheduled for Tuesday with Ian July. So just to ask members, does that, I think maybe... The brief we did on Tuesday was a bit ambitious on my part. We had probably a few too many uh, witnesses there. Um, but does that time scale work, or do you want me to move it to somewhere else, Karen, or anybody else, or any other members that would like to comment? Yeah, I definitely struggle when we got it, and it's difficult to get a time in. Um, but how things move uh, in the assembly as well. You could be pulled somewhere. We start at half ten, so that would be my concern. But um, Travelling for two hours, you, if you had traffic, it's 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 tough. I got that. Certainly is. Okay, yeah, that's totally accepted. The, the the challenge that presents then is that if we are trying to do additional informal meetings, they it sounds like they have to be outside of assembly sitting time rather than during assembly sitting time, which probably gives you. Wednesday afternoon, Thursdays and Fridays, which will obviously conflict with some committees, I presume, for some other members. Uh, is there anyone on this committee that sits on two committees? Yes, there's a few. Yeah. Robin okay. and Robin. Um, yeah. Cal Cal do you want to uh, superimpose um, other members' committees onto the diary and see if that leaves us with any free time anywhere? There is no free time anywhere. Our okay. problem is uh, Robin, I think, is Thursday afternoon. William, uh, when does PAC meet? Is that Thursday afternoon? Yeah. Uh, Catherine, Morris, Robbie uh, and Daniel, uh, the audit chair, don't forget, um, among other things. Uh, so it's, it's Thursdays and Fridays or just not really go or it's it's Tuesday lunchtime which I know you're in APGs is impossible for you but it was if that 9 30 slot doesn't work and the lunchtime slot doesn't work I'm kind of struggling um, to come up with anything I suppose Charles, since they are informal meetings it's really just as you don't need a quorum for it no you don't. Yeah, you don't yeah you don't yeah um, really I think you try to keep the format as you suggested uh, as we had in practice and, and if it's possible it's possible if it's not it's not and we try to catch up at a later stage chair yeah if, if members have another day or time that they think is worth trying if they could share it with the clerk and or myself and we'll, we'll try it. it taking informal meetings does give us access to information that we probably want would not otherwise have access but um uh, will we the next proposal is tuesday the 20th at 9 30 with angel eyes do um do, do members want us to go ahead with that meeting and we'll see who can attend and who can't or do members have another date and time to propose not going to dwell on this one because we've tried, tried quite hard in relation Trancy. to Trancy. Trancy. Um, Okay. Okay, then if members are, is that agreed? Agreed. Okay. Uh, genuinely, if members have other days or time that they think would work better, let us know. Okay, uh, so, Chair, um, just to take us through the forward work programme, um, mm -hmm. I think on the 4th of November, what we're going to try and do is special schools area planning and uh, a briefing then from the department on the budget and uh, October monitoring. That means I'll have to reschedule um, the committee planning session uh, to some other time. Um, okay, sorry, I, I'm, I'm getting this a wee bit uh, the wrong way around. Let me, uh, let me try and not confuse you. Um, the plan, I think, would be, if it works, is that next week I'll endeavour to get the Education Authority to come first at 9.30 and then follow that with the National Autistic Society and Evangelical Alliance. Uh, so we would do the closed session that we plan to do today 
Um, if that, again, I don't know that um, the witnesses are available, but I'll have a do at that if that works for members. Can I throw a spanner in the works, Clark? Yeah. Um, I, I, I think it's worth the committee uh, endeavouring to invite the Education Minister next week. Do yeah. members have a view on that? Agree? Disagree? Agree. And if, if that means rescheduling the Education Authority to the week after, then I, I, I think there are enough live issues here for us to do that. Take members' views. Yeah, I just think, I know we have a lot uh, on our agenda and our radar that we need to cover, but when the Education Minister is here, and I appreciate he too is extremely busy, uh, I think we need the time chair to fully scrutinise uh, the decisions that are being made. And it's difficult on a day that we have two sessions. Uh, because the day's decisions by the executive here, totally. Yeah, not generally, just. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 you threw me off my train of thought now, Ron. <laughs> Uh, uh, so, so you, can explore, you can explore a line of questioning, uh, so you can expand and explore a line of questioning with the minister. I, I just find, given that there's so there's nine members on the committee, it's difficult to get into the the, the detail that is necessary in order to provide uh, the the scrutiny of the decisions that have been reached. And I just think when the minister's here, that we may not need him as frequently. Then, if we have a more yeah, no, look, I, I, I take that on board. I think NAS and EA next week would be in relation to um, health services for vulnerable children, so I think there would be a degree of um, synergy with the Education Minister that it would be okay to go with two sessions. Um, are, are members content if we request that the clerk seek the Education Minister next week? And if that, I imagine you'll know quickly whether that's possible or not. If it's possible, reschedule the Education Authority. If it's not, try to get the Education Authority. I realise this will be dynamic for you, Clark, but are, are members content with that approach? Great. 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 Mm -hmm. Clark, are you yeah, content um, with that approach? Uh, yes, is the answer, and I'm okay. just emailing the Dallow to see what he that. says. <laughs> um, so, but, okay, so it's either the Minister or the Education Authority, if they're available, and the National Autistic Society Evangelical Alliance. Um, if neither of them is available, then we could actually try and take the uh, budget brief, if that works. That would be our third choice, yeah. which is unusual, if that works. We, we, we trust you to... Okay, jolly to good. Prioritise accordingly, <laughs> yep. Okay, then, so this just kind of makes a wee bit of a mess of what goes forward. So after Halloween, we have a special schools area planning on the 4th of November. Um, that might be, uh, we might take an effective questioning um, session uh, after that, or possibly the budget brief if we can't get it some other time. Then 11th November, it's going to be IFA, GAA, and just want to clarify, it's Ulster Rugby, not IRFU, because mm -hmm. Ulster Rugby replied to us yep. on uh, the sports issues and sports programmes, etc., and hopefully the department as well. And then over the page, um, 18th of November then, I would hope that we'd be able to get the Children's Law Centre to come up and talk about vulnerable children. And then later that day, we would have DE, EA and DOH, hopefully talking about the feedback from the consultation on the cross-sectoral support plan for vulnerable children. So Children's Law Centre would be able to sort of line up questions for you. Um, 25th of November would be integrated education. Uh, the 2nd then of December might be the SEN framework, because they're in the middle of a consultation. Um, now, um, do you want an oral briefing then on the children and young people's strategy? It was supposed to be today, or are you content with um, the, the papers that they have sent us, members, chairperson? I think it would be good to get an oral briefing and content for it to be scheduled on that date if members are as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. children and young people's strategy, oral briefing. Yep. Yeah, I think that's yeah. an important strategy to receive an oral briefing on Clark. Okay, um, and then the week after that, 9th of December, we've currently penciled that in for British Association of Social Workers to talk about restrictive practice, seclusion and restraint. So this is a question we get asked uh, a number of times just to, to bring members up to speed with that. Then maybe the 16th of December, what I might do is, if members are agreeable, might use that as a planning session and possibly even an effective questioning session. So just that would be stock. a... Yeah, yeah. and good. then after Christmas, we could come back with Youth Work Alliance and the CA briefing on standardisation and moderation, which are sort of uh, you know, important sort of background things. So, so um, busy, Clark. it does, and like, that takes us up to the new year, and in fact, well into the new year. Um, so it does. So I trust uh, members, if there's any glaring omission there or um, 
Yeah, any clearing omission if members would like to advise, this is a good time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Members content with the forward work programme as proposed? Yep. Agreed? Agreed. Marvellous. Okay. Members, briefly then, in terms of any other business, um, can I refer members to your packs, uh, which include uh, a section on post-primary transfer motion, a covering note from the clerk is at page 105, a communications uh, campaign report at page 107, and a final report and annexes at page 119 to 155. At our meeting on the 7th of October, the committee agreed to give further consideration to bringing a committee motion to plenary for debate relating to the committee's online survey into post-primary transfer testing. Um, can I seek members' views on the Assembly communications in promoting the survey? I, th I think given the amount of responses that we received, we can uh, conclude that we were generally supportive um, of the Communications work in relation to the survey. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think it was a slick operation and uh, very cost effective as well, from what I know. Uh, so uh, and they've reached all their targets. So I think they need to yeah. be congratulated and uh, hard station to them for the work they've done. I think the one piece of feedback was obviously it was it was social media based. So as you say, Daniel, that was cost effective. However, it, it probably did have its limitations yeah. in terms of certain. Um, groups and backgrounds of people that it was able to access or not access and, and if there had been more time or more um, resource available we could have um, broadened the scope of that but we were aware that it was going to be uh, an indicative survey and, we, and, and it's important for us to, to you know, consider that when reviewing any of the findings. Um, m members uh, content with that? The, the other uh, um, task I would take us on to is the wording of a motion. Um, there are two drafts. One, that the Assembly take note of the feedback to the Committee uh, for Education's recent online survey into post-primary transfer testing, um, or that this Assembly, and this is really with a view to try and to have constructive engagement with the Minister on the issue, it, it would seem remiss to not bring a motion that would seek to um, garner engagement and a response from the Minister. So the, the alternative is that this Assembly takes note of the feedback to the Committee for Education's recent online survey into post-primary transfer testing and calls on the Minister for Education to bring forward revised post-primary transfer arrangements, open to how that might read from calls on the Minister for Education on, um, conscious that some people might think revised post-primary transfer arrangements are not necessary, that that wording could be adjusted, for example, to um, consider contingency arrangements for post-primary transfer. Happy to take members' views on that, but I, I do think, given what has been announced today, that it would be constructive for us to bring uh, this motion to the Assembly. Clark? Do you want to go to closed session um, this discussion? Yeah, I'm content to do that. Um, members content to move to closed session in this regard? Yep, content. Yeah. So push, okay. the, push the button there if you would. Okay, thanks, sir. Thank you. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 29. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 29.